Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we are going to be chatting about the Gone Matte Palette from ColourPop. Yes, they have an all matte big palette plus um, some of these blotted lip colors. They have a collection that's all kind of like earthy looking tones. And once I saw that that stuff came out, I thought I, I must order that. I actually get sent quite a bit of ColourPop PR like I'll know if I'm getting something from a certain collection. Usually it'll arrive like just before or right on where it launches, but I didn't get any of this stuff and I thought, well, that's fine. I will order it then because it's it's completely up my alley. So Gone Matte is one of their larger palettes. And as you can see here, it's just full of matte, nothing but matte. And in this video, I'm gonna try on all those, by the way, and I'm gonna do a look with this. That's why I've got like all my makeup done, but that stuff. It's kind of funny because I've been sort of talking about with palettes how I'm trending personally toward wanting to have something a little bit more pared down, not quite so big, but yet I get this and I'm like, I, I think it's awesome. And it might be because of the super thoughtful layout, very logical layout, very user-friendly that really lends itself toward getting used. You know what I mean? So first off, number one, big picture here, we have half of the palette that's warmer, half is cooler. But then just look down the rows. You know, you have a perfect monochromatic um, spectrum of shades here going from warmest to coolest. And I think that's really neat as well. The first time I used this, I actually just kind of played with the general section of the palette. I did a warmer look. And then the last couple of times I decided, okay, I'm just going to isolate this row and just do that and then the next time I just used this row and I thought it was so nice and it was so handy if you like an all matte eye look I think you will love this palette because the quality is so great but also you know you have that really logical layout that speaks to me so much and today I was actually thinking I might step out of that layout a little bit just to show you how maybe some warm and cool combine to create kind of a cool look but I just think it's fabulous and the range is just perfection. I mean, it is kind of like that perfect matte neutral wardrobe. You look across the bottom, look how dark everything gets, you know, um, and then mid-tones and then light. All I can say is it's balanced. It's balanced as heck. You've got your perfect black. You've got um, a couple versions of dark brown. We have burgundy. We have dark rust. I am one who wears both warm and cool shadows, so maybe that's another reason why I'm really falling into this as well, but um, the colors I find to be easy to blend like once I get a dark shade on there it's still able to have a little mobility on the eye a little blendability you know what I'm saying it's not like just junk sticks right where you put it you can blend it and I'm not sure I would be so excited about it if they didn't put like this cool kind of pinky row in here and the mauvey sort of plummy row is really great as well and what it kind of reminds me of color scheme wise I had a couple of great matte palettes from the um, Kim Kardashian makeup line. She had like a matte cocoa palette and a matte, I think they called it matte smoke or something, but one was really matte and warm and one was matte and cool. And this really reminds me of the cool one and everything over here, like these two rows, reminds me of that warm palette. If you had those, you're probably seeing it in this um, as well. But I'm really, really happy with it, you guys. I haven't turned out a look with it that I've disliked in any way, so we're gonna get to it and do a look with it right now. I've got my eye primer on. I also have some Valentine's decorations up. I kept the garland, but I put this like, is it a tinsel type of Valentine's garland? It's really fluffy and cute. You can't really get a good sense of it from back here, but I just kind of laid it over the top and I don't know. I thought it looked nice. At least maybe through winter we'll keep it up. Like I said, today I'm thinking I'd like to combine some warm and cool into a look and just kind of show you how that goes because it is very obvious how you could just select one row, do a whole look, and that's a great way to go about it. But let's see. Let's try some Chase Me. Right over here, this warm kind of deep peach color. Again, my lids are already primed. Let's center yourself up a bit, Em. But what is it about an all matte eye? Like, I really think that it's the super perfect look you can achieve, a really timeless classic look. And neutrals are really, like, probably my favorite <laughs> Thing to do with them. I, I love a good neutral palette. I'm sorry. But I like neutral with some variety within that rather than just being brown and black. You know, we've got quite a bit of variety. Okay, so I'm just kind of 
getting things going here with this light shade. I think I'll add a little bit more, try to raise it up a little more. Then I'm going to go over to this shade right here called Fleecy. It's like a really pretty deep rusty brown. I'm going to get some of that and that's also going to go to my crease. Layering mats. I mean, it's one of the most satisfying things in eye makeup for me. Is seeing two mats kind of come together and fuse. Also, the cost on this palette, let's talk about that. I believe it's $34 was what I paid for it. Double checking. Yes. So it's $34 for a 30 shade palette full of consistent quality. And you think of what you might pay for a smaller, higher end palette. Like, completely worth it. Okay, look at how pretty those shades are coming together there. Love them together. We started with Chase Me, and then we went to Felici right here. And now I think we're gonna pull in something on that outer lid that's maybe a bit cooler. And that was my Profusion Crease Brush, by the way, for all those first steps. And now I've got my Morphe M167, my new flat brush. I'm gonna go to Cushion Cut right here. Kind of a plummy, dusty plum. So as I shoot this, it is Monday, um, the Monday after New Year's. The healthy eating is going to really kick into major gear today. You should see all the salad in my fridge. <laughs> Kids go back to school actually tomorrow. Oh, look at that. I am in love with the way that plum and that kind of peachy warmth is coming together. This isn't even our darkest purpley shade in the row, but oh my goodness, I love that. Maybe let's take a little bit of the darker one. This is such a pretty shade, kind of a unique shade. It's called Velvet, what is it called? Velvet Dress. Super dark plum right here, but not too purpley, okay? They still, they, they kind of reined in, you know, any color that was put in here. Oh yeah, right in that outer corner. That is so pretty. This might be my favorite look I've done yet. I did like my cool smoky look that I did yesterday. I used the, the far row over here. It just looks like that rose in black and white, right? Everything else is in color. But it really turned out nice, and I was so happy with how easy the colors were to work with. Okay, gang, see what we've done there? These two rich couple of plummy shades came to play with the warmth. And then what I think I'm going to do, this is kind of a trick I like to do, is pick another shade. This may be somewhere in between everything you've just done and add that to your crease. So for me, that might feel like this shade right here called Poofy, Poofé. <laughs> this deep burgundy. Get a little bit of that with a small brush. And then you just kind of start working over that crease, kind of like on the seam of the darkness on the lid and what was in the crease. And it kind of just ties it all together. See what I mean? It perfects the crease. Now, if the palette were this big and it was way, way more random or just like kind of harder to follow, I don't know, the, it's so easy to follow. Like, I think even a beginner who's like, oh, yeah, I want to do some all matte eye looks, uh, or even if you don't and you want to pull in some shimmers you already have, like, it's so logical. You see where your light is, you see where your dark is. If you want to stay in a lane, you can easily do it. Or you can bounce around like we're doing today. But it's just, it's very user-friendly. And I think something I'm learning about myself is I like a larger palette that really has some rhyme and reason. So here's what we've got. Now we're going to go back to a flat brush and we're just gonna do a little something there on the lid. Let's go to Teddy right here. One of these light shades. Look at the pigment of the light shades. Yeah, they can hang too. They will show up. They're able to overlap and continue making an impact. Love. And there's not like too, too many of them, you know? It's just the right amount of light. Whoever designed this, I think did a fantastic job. See where we're at now? Really nice and smooth, beautiful. The only thing I might do to add to this is actually bring back some warmth. I'm gonna go back to Chase Me, and I just wanna see that color like come out and, and just thrive a little bit more right up in here. Isn't that fun? Isn't that a fun place to be at in your eye look when you're just taking your accent shade 
and letting it intensify a bit more. The warm and the cool, baby. It works. It would also be really pretty and maybe even more logical if you started with those shades and then went into this as like your dark outer corner. That would be beautiful too, but making it cooler and putting the plum in there, I think is so, it's, it's very sunsetty, right? It's very much like the trees have become these dark silhouettes, but we still have this setting sun around it. Yes. Will I do anything with the lower lash line? I, I feel like this look isn't really begging for it, but I'm going to take a little bit of velvet dress, but with kind of a diffused brush. This is my Profusion Small Pointed. We're just getting a little bit down there. I love that shade. So now I'm just going to finish off this eye look with a little bit of eyeliner, um, some mascara, and then I will try on all, how many colors do we have of that stuff? Eight. We have eight of these blotted lips that I want to show you. I'm not head over heels for all the shades, but there are some that are absolute dynamite. So we'll get there in a second. Okay, guys, we took that eye look. We dressed it up with some lashes. I put on the um, Kiss My Lash But Better and So Real, one of my all-time favorite styles, and I I did a little bit of winged liner as well and a light liner in the lower inner rim. But yeah, bottom line, I love this palette. I think it's super well done in both the sense of quality and layout and balance. I really love the way it was put together because it can inspire some super quick, like, you know, five shade or less looks in a certain color scheme. Or you can do what we did today and kind of bounce around, maybe set up the crease with something warm, put something cooler in the like outer corner and lid and it's so, so pretty as well. So I like a neutral palette that still gives me options and that's kind of what this is. And for it being a larger palette and still being such a source of enjoyment rather than overwhelm, um, I really like that. So now let's talk about these blotted lips. When I saw the color range of this collection, I thought that's something I think I'm really gonna wanna try. So I just ordered the entire, like, you know how you can do that with ColourPop usually. They put something out and you can get all of them. So they're called blotted lips. And what's interesting about them is that they're going to be like a matte sheer product on your lips. Think about like Glossier's Generation G. Um, I have one of those and it's really pretty. Like it stays matte and kind of pillowy looking on the lips, but there's pigment to it. Um, these are like that, only much more comfortable in feel. Like these glide on like lip balm. And then the deeper ones at least kind of leave a little bit of a stain type of action. I'm going to try on the ones I that aren't my faves first and then we'll end with the ones I really, really like. So again, all of these go on super duper comfortable. They're like a slim stick. This is the one called Super Mellow, and the cap really caps tight. That's something to know about. Like, you'll cap it once, and then you might need to press down one more time, and it will really, like, lock in there for you. But this is the shade Super Mellow. Ooh, also, there's a really pretty, like, lightly sweet scent that makes me think of, a like, a cookie or something, like a shortbread cookie. Um, anyways, I'm going to let this glide on, and there is some intentional sheerness with these. They're called blotted lips, you know, it's kind of like you had a full-on lip color and then you blotted a lot of the intensity away. Um, I think in the description on the website they said they're buildable to like a like a medium coverage on the lips, so to speak. And I do see that. You can go over them a couple more swipes and get a little more color. But this is the shade called Super Mellow. So some people might like that really soft nude. Um, I don't totally dislike it, but it's just not one of my faves. Also, I just feel like I get more satisfying, like almost stain-like effect with some of my favorites that I'm going to mention. They're interesting because while they don't set with some like matte lipstick dry down situation because they do go on very in a very moisturizing way, the way some of the deeper shades last, they feel like they leave some kind of a stain on your lips. They feel very weightless. Okay, next is a shade called, I think it's called Los Feliz. Okay, I'm going to put this on. This feels a lot like what we just had, but a little bit warmer. I do like this shade a lot. Peachy nude, anyone? Love that. The more times you go around your lips, the more you can like build up the color. But again, overall, it is an intentionally sheer product, but matte. Um, next up, we're going to do Otter. This is another soft one. This has a little bit more pinky tone in it. See how many times I kind of swipe over? I, if you just do a complete once over on the lips, it'll be barely there on most of this stuff, but go over it a couple times. Oh, that's pretty. That's on the cusp of my inner circle of these shades. This next one is called On Film. I'm always a fan of how they color the whole tube because that makes it so easy to just identify what that color is going to be, find it in your collection, you know. 
So here's on film. This is one of our brownish colors, but a little bit warm. Look how there's one swipe across, super sheer. A little, a little more with another pass. Toasty, pretty. Not really hating any of these, but we haven't gotten to my favorites yet. And then we have this one called Melty. And this one, as I was playing with it the other day, I felt like I just, I didn't love the way this shade looked in this kind of sheer formula, but let's show you. Going on feeling like a thin, yet moisturizing lip balm, but not greasy. Oh, that looks pretty. What? The other day I thought it looked kind of patchy going on. Maybe it was once I started trying to build it up. Yeah, that was the deal. It's looking a little patchier once I go over it. Just a once over with this dark one called Melty actually looks kind of nice. So now we're gonna move on to my three favorites. These are my three faves. One is pretty dark, um, but the other two are kind of, I'd say, like mid tony type shades. One's called Talker. I'm going to put that one on. Look how natural. So natural and pretty. Look how it's given my lips like just, just a little more pinky tone. Like this is maybe how I'd like my lips to just be all the time. You know, the natural pigment. And look how you don't see shine. You see some intentional sheerness. But there's some color with that one. I, I just really like that. And you talk about every day, throw it on, would look good with anything because it's so mimicking natural lips. I love that one. Again, it's called Talker. Then I really liked this kind of warmer mid-tone here called Missing You. Look how it kind of gets this, this unusual sort of warm rosiness going. I like this one built just a little. How are we even pegging this color? I remembered playing with it and I was like, what, what actually is this? Is it actually kind of pinky, like a warmer pink, sort of? Seems warmer on the lips than this one, but they're both kind of in the same, same intensity level, same depth level. A little cooler, a little warmer. Mm, love it. And then this last one, guys. I feel like a lot of people are gonna think that this is gonna be like maybe a blotted lip matte take on Clinique's Black Honey, but it's not really. It's actually much more berry-ish. There's more color intensity to this. This was the one I was wearing like all day yesterday just to see what happened to it. And it absolutely like did a staining thing on my lips, but it looked really nice and even. The moisture fades fast with these, so that nice moisture that you feel as you apply it. Um, you go about your day wearing it and it's like, okay, well that wore off pretty quick. But with some of these shades, like especially this one, it makes the biggest kind of stained color impact that lasts. So this is the one called Shook. So again, the color of the tube makes you think Clinique Black Honey vibes, but that one is much more like brownish plum. And you can see how much berry is coming out of this. There's like one pass with this shade, okay? I like the way it looks with an extra go round. So pretty. Mm, berry, there's a, quite a bit of pink in this shade. It's so lovely and it wears especially well. So again, my top picks there, ColourPop, if we wanna make a bundle here, let's put in Talker and Missing You and Shook. Those are my three favorites. But the others are great too. Like my favorite of the really nude ones was probably Los Feliz or possibly Otter. Um, if we really wanna go light with a lip look, those just will definitely have less of an impact for extended wear. And Melty wasn't so bad. I just didn't love the look as I tried to build it, but like one pass with that gave a more like deeper, but much more brownie neutral than this. But a really cool product because they've definitely come up with some Something that feels so smooth going on, so comfortable. It does have a little range because you can build them, but they give your lips kind of that stained look. I think it's really, really pretty. I don't know how much that shade is actually vibing with my overall look today. I don't know if I want to call it a look yet because I feel like with the warmth up here, I might be better suited with um, one of the other shades. Yeah, I'm going to use Missing You instead. Thank you guys so much for taking time to watch. I hope this review was helpful on the Gone Matte palette. That's probably the number one thing here, but I really think those blotted lips are nice and interesting and just provide that fun little different product, you know, to your makeup collection. I mean, look at how effortless now that shade looks. Oh, I don't know if I said, but I've got blush on today. I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm palette and I use my M Cosmetics like contour sticks. So really the only part of this that I used was the blush and the highlight. Let's add a little more blush for your viewing satisfaction here. <laughs> that looks so pretty paired with the eye look. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, my friends. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye.